I heard chickens. Okay. <laughs> hey, look! We're alive! Here we are. We're still kicking. It is the end of October, and we're like, oh, it's the end of October. We should probably post a video so people don't think we've been kidnapped. It's been a while. We apologize. Oh, we have been so busy this fall. Right when I said this fall. <laughs> I know, it's still recording. <laughs> All right. I take the blame, because I'm the a one. That's shoddy camera ship right there. Well. You mean it's not meant to I'm gonna blame. I'm going to blame it on this tripod. Oh, okay. Not made to grip to milking equipment? I guess not. All right, we'll see how long this lasts. Okay. That's pretty much how our month has gone. <laughs> No, we've been doing good. We've just been so busy. Uh, some things that Stacy has been doing to get ready for winter. So what are those then? What things have we been doing? Well, in winter, water likes to freeze, and so we have to deal with that. So uh, we pretty much decommissioned all of our pasture water tanks, scrubbed them out, drained them, brought them back here to the barn. We disconnected and drained all our water system that runs out to all our paddocks so that's you know over a thousand feet of uh, poly line and uh, those are all drained and set for winter they stay out in the field they're just drained and, and disconnected uh, heaters in the tanks so we have the tanks up here at the barn one for the horses one for the cows and those have heaters and what else have we been doing? Oh, uh, we've been moving our cows now to their uh, kind of permanent winter paddocks. We have about uh, five winter paddocks where we just move them about once a month between the different paddocks because they're not grazing anymore. And uh, we've shifted to winter feeding, which is, you know, how much do we need to feed them between now and when we dry them off in February? So they're getting into that routine. And uh, Stacy put up um, snow guards on some of the uh, metal roofing that we have around the farm, to prevent, which prevents like snow sliding off certain areas of those roofs, which is kind of important when you don't want to be hit by snow from a metal roof. And uh, what else have you been doing? Got all the uh, hay equipment oh, yeah. put away for the winter, so it's all. Uh, undercover, at least the, the hay loader and, and the hay rake, the, the pieces with lots of moving parts, there's put away under undercover. And the cows have been doing great. They're, they are transitioning through the fall into the winter. Cows are doing wonderful. The oldest one, Sunflower, is just about six months old. So within the next month, we'll start thinking about uh, weaning them off of the cows. We're still milking uh, once a day in the morning and separating the calves overnight and they're doing great. Everybody's doing great. We, we, we have not uh, done pregnancy testing yet because we've been so busy. Uh, so that is on our list. We definitely want to get that done so we have that assurance, but we feel pretty good. Uh, we haven't seen any indicators that would show that a cow's not pregnant right now. So, uh, but we'd still want to do that test just to confirm and the horses are doing great. We're doing horseback riding lessons, and that has been going really well. We're learning a lot, and the two horses are amazing. They're so patient with us, and so that's awesome. And what else are we doing? Uh, finishing up on the what I call the tractor shed. It's a, a lean-to uh, we built off the shop. We started building it quite a while ago using just leftover lumber for uh, leftover lumber from the barn here and so it really hasn't cost us anything um, but we finally broke down and bought metal for the roof which was really expensive we've been kind of waiting it out to see if the prices would come down and they hadn't and it's getting so late that we just had to bite the bullet luckily it's not a not a big roof and so it wasn't too bad and like i said we have no money invested in the lumber or even any of the hardware because it's all just leftover stuff so but that would be a nice place uh, we can park a tractor during the winter to keep the snow off of it and where it's located is also adjacent to our power meters and our plug-in for our generator so should we have a power outage during the winter it will give us a covered place to run the tractor and the generator and keep the elements off those 
uh, if we need to make our own power. So that would be really nice to get that up. We, get, we hope to get that up in the next uh, week or two. We'll be picking it up this week. And the chickens are doing fine. You know, we had that one chick uh, hatch out two baby chicks, and then we found another chicken hatch out three baby chicks, and she's doing well. Evidently, we can't count because we didn't realize <laughs> we were missing a second chicken. Well, it's over 10, so that's over two hands. I mean, you know, you yeah. can't blame us there. And so I was just out working one day, and here's this, it's, it's a black chicken, here's this black chicken with three little chicks following it around, so. Yeah. Uh, but she's doing good, they're, they're all doing good, so she's keeping them warm, and uh, we're kind of doing the same uh, hands-off approach that we did with the other chicken, just letting mama raise, raise them up, so, so and far so good. We finished our farmer's market that ended in uh, mid-October. And so we have people picking up now off the farm and we have a pickup in Chihuahua and then also the local uh, store that we have right by our farm. So that's another transition for us. There's a lot of transitions this month, actually. And uh, we're, because uh, with the, the little bit of drop off of fluid customers from the end of the farmer's market, we're diverting a little bit more milk towards cheese. We're making feta cheese today. Right now, right now, it's we're waiting for the cheese to, to set up so we can get a clean break. So we're transitioning, like Stacy said, to doing milk, but then doing a batch of uh, cheese or whatnot during the week as well. And that's exciting. We have Gouda currently aging and uh, we're doing feta today. And then we'll try our hand at pepper jack, which I'm looking up recipes for. Just gotta decide how hot we want it. Um, yeah. Other things going on. Uh, I've taken a volunteer position where I'm helping out with some veterans issues in our county. So that's taking some more of my time. Time that you may have noticed I probably was using to edit and post videos. So I think that's been the biggest change this month is suddenly any time that I had that I normally would divert to oh, well, let's make sure we get this, you know, put together and put up, has kind of disappeared. So we're going to work a little harder at that, trying to make sure I have time to work on the videos. We have a video that I need to edit and put up about uh, waxing the kafili cheese in local beeswax, which turned out really, really good. So I need to put that together. And uh, we have some exciting things coming up. We're getting ready for the holiday season, which for me is just putting lots of white lights everywhere, which I love because when it's dark, I just love having white lights up around the house and around the barn. And we put a star in the back of the barn. So we'll be getting those up and ready soon and we'll have some photos and video of that. And other exciting things that we'll just share with you in future videos. I think that's enough. We've been busy. Yeah. So thanks for hanging out and, you know, keeping an eye on us and wondering what we're up to. Things are going good. We're working hard and, you know, just transitioning into winter. All right. Well, thanks for joining us and uh, being patient and sticking around to wait for a new video because it's been like a month but we appreciate that and uh, we'll, we'll try and do better and we'll see you next time on the Tom Rosa oh hey you're still here so are we cutting the curve You may notice how quiet it is in the milking parlor while we're milking. Well, as you can see, there's no vacuum pump behind me. So that made a huge difference. We actually moved it out of the parlor and it is making milking much more enjoyable. So we actually built a pump hut uh, this last summer because we do plan to put in a pipeline and that's gonna require a bigger and louder pump. But we did temporarily go ahead and move um, our smaller vacuum pump out there and we just have the hose and the cord running through the wall For now, it's working great and It'll be ready when we install the bigger pump
girls. 